Today we're going to be focusing on something a little bit different than just the CAD drawing environment. We're going to be looking at print reading. And so we've had quite a few questions from our students regarding how to read a drawing. And so I figured I would cover that as a uh, quick hit video style environment. So we've got the questions about the drawing, we've got the drawing itself that we're going to be working on, and then the answers that we'll, that we'll uh, type in here in the middle. So the first thing we need to do is identify what the drawing looks like and get an idea of exactly uh, what we're looking at and what we're working with on the drawing. And so as we're looking at this particular drawing, you can see that we have a drawing sheet. Uh, we've got the title block. Uh, the information about the title block is provided. Uh, we've got notes associated with it. We have a revision box. And then we've got the drawing itself. So we've got a front view a top view, a left side view, and a detailed view of this particular object itself. So ultimately, we're going to uh, be answering the questions about these particular uh, views, drawings. Uh, we also are going to be pulling information out of the notes and the title block as we go along. So the first question focuses on describing the dimension symbol on the, uh, the top view. Uh, that's associated with the 2.5, 10.5, 11.5, and 17. And so what they're what they're referring to are these circles here right along the extension line. And so print reading is all about the detail and focusing on the detail of the drawing itself. So those circles that we have indicate that ever that all the dimensions are coming from one common datum or one common surface. So in this case, the the goal is to uh, focus on that surface where that dimension originates. And so the term that is used on this particular uh, item, item is called an origin. So it's an origin of the dimension. So it's much like using a common datum for ge geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, that it refers to a specific surface. So. Um, Number two, describe the dimensioning practice used in the front view. So when we're looking at the dimensioning practice, what we're looking at is that everything is dimensioned, again, from a common datum surface. So if you take a look here, all the values that are dimensioned are across this outside surface of the part. The rest of the dimensions are located around the drawing itself. And the term that's utilized is a direct dimension, uh, again. Um, using that common extension line that references the surface of the part is focused on that. And what that eliminates is that that eliminates any tolerance buildup. So tolerances are the variation of the part that will still make it acceptable to use. And so if we were to mention uh, the 1.25 from the center and the 2.5 from the center and the one inch dimension from the center, we could end up with a tolerance buildup. But if we're working from a common surface, a known surface, we can then measure based on that known surface and work from there. So it's a common surface direct dimension. Number three. Give the overall dimensions of the part and show how the calculations were needed. So the overall dimensions of the part. So when we're looking at this, there are no major dimensions here. We've got we don't we don't know what the outside dimension here happens to be. That's the largest. We can get there's a fair amount of linear dimensions, so we can calculate the overall distance. So coming from this side, we have a 10.5 dimension with that common extension line to the um, to that origin position, and then we've got a 17 dimension to the tip. So it'd be 17 plus 10.5 or 27.5. So the length is 27.5, and the diameter 
if we have to look over here on this left hand side we've got a 9 diameter that refers to the overall diameter of this part and so again the overall diameter happens to be 9 so we will So you kind of get the idea of how we have to look throughout the whole drawing to gather all the informational data about a specific question. So what's the tolerance on the nine dimension and where is the tolerance found? So since there is no direct tolerance on the dimension itself, we have to go searching for where a note may be referring to tolerances. That's typically found in the title block. So when we go and take a look at the title block, in the top of the title block it indicates default tolerance values and so if it's one decimal place two decimal places or three decimal places they provide the tolerance item well this happens to have one decimal place so it's going to be plus minus 0.2 so number four the answer is title block and the tolerance would be nine point would be plus minus point two would be the tolerance itself so that way the overall dimension could be nine point two or it could be eight point eight adding and subtracting that point two from the nine dimension question number five name the symbol of the circle found on the leader line associated with the r 1.5 dimension so searching around, we'll find that there's an R1.5 dimension that has a circle around it, along with some of the other dimensions associated with this. And what that indicates is it indicates that it's a circular part, that it goes all the way around. So if you have a dimension that is not a weld, um, but it's just a dimension, which is what it is in this case, uh, what it represents is that all the way around that particular part, that radius happens to be 1.5. So so all around is number 5. Number 6. Give the diameter and tolerance of the feature located where the view Z is taken. Uh, so give the diameter and the tolerance of the feature located from where view Z is taken. 2.4, 2.74 slash 2.5 tolerance. So view Z is located here. And it looks like view Z is the tip of this particular object. And so we're working with a tolerance value of a diameter of 2.74 versus 2.5 and that's found here on this top view 2.74 to 2.5 and so the tolerance value is the distance between the two so that what this is showing is a maximum size that the part can be and a minimum size the part can be and so subtracting the two you can provide that tolerance value of that diameter. So number six tolerance is 0.24 and that would solve that problem because that's what it was looking for is the tolerance value give the diameter the tolerance. Well the diameter uh, of Z is 2.74 2.5 so we've got the uh, the tolerance value is the distance between the two. Number seven what is the surface finish? So what we have to do for surface finish since there's no surface finish symbols we have to look in our notes because more than likely the surface finish is going to be indicated in our notes. So I'm searching around here looking for any surface finish symbols and surface finish symbols are check marks and there's a value of roughness associated with that check mark. So if it's not there then let's look in our notes. So starting with note number one on the bottom we'll work our way up. 
surface finish to be RA 3.2. So again, uh, RA 3.2 is the surface finish value that is uh, being uh, required for this particular part itself. Number eight, give the full name of the material used to make this part. So again, this is going to be found either in the title block or the notes, and it is the materials, the Formosa FM090 or Centerjet's engineer equi approved equivalent color is white. So in essence, we would type that whole uh, line because that is, and I'll just do Formosa dot 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 so you get an idea of where we're grabbing it from. So that's actually coming from note number two. Number eight, give the full name of the material. That's what we just did. Number nine, identify the square shape symbols found on each side of the left side view. A parting line is associated with a plastic molded part print and with metal castings and forgings. And so what we're doing here is since this is a uh, molded part and it, the mold actually has to come together in two separate pieces. So the parting line or the uh, squares that are indicated here are indicators of where that parting line happens to be located. Um, that way there is an alignment and that can be used for an alignment of the mold itself or the casting itself depending upon if this is a plastic or a metal mold or a plastic or a metal part associated with it. So again this is the center line we're going to have two mold halves that will come together to make this part itself. Number 10, refer to the General Note 6 and describe the standard used in the reference. So General Note 6 is drawing is in accordance with AMSE Y.14.8 2009. So what you would do is ASME, American Association of Mechanical Engineers, puts out standards for drafting, design, um, mechanical systems. And so Y.14.8-2009 refers to casting parts, and so that is the A, uh, ASME uh, standards uh, declaration, and there's a lot of details associated with that, but you can look up that specific re reference to ensure that the drawing was created um, specifically based on those items. So uh, ASME Y.14.8-2009 um, castings. And that's what it refers to. And so right now ASME for design drafting is on Y.14.10. 2017 is the latest version of the ASME design drafting standards. So they keep updating these standards uh, every um, eight to 10 years, typically. All right, that was number 10. Number 11 is name the view which gives the scale and identify the specifications of the angle at the corner of the 2.74, 2.5. And so this, the 2.74, 2.5, if you take a look at that, remember that was the tip, and that tip was noted by view Z. And so the scale of view Z is 10 to 1. And so question number 11 is view Z 10 to 1 scale is the answer because that's what it refers to. And number 12 is identify the sheet size. So the sheet size is found in the title block. And so in this case, the size of the paper is an A3 paper. And so it's slightly different than an 8.5 by 11, but for most references, it's pretty close to an 8.5 by 11. Could be a 12 by 9 uh, setup. A3 sheet size.
All right, that gives you an idea of how print reading is done and how you can answer the questions about the print reading environment. And again, it's all about looking at the details of the drawing and trying to figure out what you're viewing. Remember, top front, right side, left side are the common views, and you have to piece all those views together to get a mental visualization of a three-dimensional object of what is going to be created. Have a great day.